Hi guys and welcome to a new video on Sonal's Life. So we had the rush, rush, rush of the first week of January. So we had Wrestle Kingdom, New Year's Dash and everything seemed to be happening. So now I'm back for a bit more on a sadder note because as you can tell from the title, I am back with the fourth and final part of my Suzuki Goon history video. Obviously final part because as we know, Suzuki Goon officially disbanded at the end of 2022 and I thought now considering that there is new stories and new factions for each of the members which you can sort of look at in my Wrestle Kingdom review and New Year's Dash review specifically I thought let's bring together everything that happened in the very long careers of Suzuki Goon and bid a farewell to probably one of the best factions New Japan has ever seen Yes, I am saying that. Yes, they are beating Bullet Club. So let's get going. Now, I am back with... So at the end of it, we actually looked at the return of Suzuki Goon from Noah and the retirement of Iska, which obviously one of the most iconic moments in New Japan history with the Iron Glove. And oddly enough, like he turned up at the end of 2022 in the Road to Tokyo Dome shows, which was very nice. So... I mean, I'm going to consult my notes because as much of a historian as I am, my memory cannot grasp together like I think it's like three years worth of Suzuki Goon history. So yeah, we start with the New Japan Cup in 2019. So it was a very, so this was before the pandemic, bear in mind. so it was a very full competition, a lot of high stakes. And we had five members of Suzuki Goon. So from what I can remember, it was Suzuki, Taichi, Zack, Archer and then Davy Boy Smith who was still a member of the faction at that point. Now all of them actually didn't really get that far. Um, I think Zach went the furthest and he out actually, <laughs> funnily enough, he lost to Hiroshi Tanahashi which is a bizarre thing and with that they went on to the big G1 Supercard show if you remember that. Um, you know the one, I think that's where Jay was like, I single-handedly sold out Madison Square Garden. And because obviously at the time of the New Japan Cup, he actually held the Rev Pro um, British Heavyweight title. So he had a defence against Tanahashi. Of course he retained that. And the next few months were quite, I mean, they were very up and down for the faction. So obviously Zach retained, which was great. The next big moment was the best of Super Junior Tour. And should I tell you, this might be the pinnacle moment in Suzuki Goon's history because as much as I hate to say it, 2019 was the year that El Desperado had to be taken out of the best of Super Junior due to injury. However, it was the introduction of Doki. So after Desperado was unable to participate, they wanted another Suzuki Goon member. Rather than push it and say, ah, we'll invite a young lion, which they had done in the past if there was injuries, they went, we're going to introduce someone new, and it was no other than Doki. So that meant that in that year's tournament, again, none of them did great. We had Doki, Kanemaru, and Taka, who, <laughs> who actually came out with zero points. But again, it was a pivotal moment, I think, for the faction, because they brought someone new. It was the first time in what seemed like forever that someone from the outside had come into Suzuki Goon. And I think it was the perfect time for him. And... Obviously, we know how much Doki is loved by fans, albeit it was a bit later than my love for Doki came, but it was great. And it also showed that compared to a lot of the other factions, Suzuki Goon is very strong in both divisions. So I said at the start of the video, there was five members of Suzuki Goon in the G1. Now we have four members of Suzuki Goon as juniors. So it was a really nice balance and something that really makes Suzuki Goon stand apart. We then had a busy few months. So according to my research here, Taichi lost the never open weight title. He lost that to Ishii. <laughs> Suzuki was in the G1. Well, no, so, sorry. Suzuki wasn't in the G1, but on the final night managed to pin Kazuchika Okada. And this, and the reason that I'm only quick on it is because this, along with, I think the fact that Zack was also pinned by Tanahashi during this G1, don't hold me to it, led on to... August 31st, Royal Quest in London. Again, which I attended. Similarly to the previous video where I was talking about the Rev Pro show that I went to. 
this was a massive show we had some amazing matches it was my first time meeting so many of the wrestlers seeing so many of them in front of my eyes and the fact that i stayed at the same hotel as them which was probably the most bizarre thing that's ever happened so that match was full of great sh like bouts there was undercard matches bullet club chaos everyone was there apart from goto and yoshihashi but that's another faction and the two main events i guess you could say it was Zack Sabre Jr. versus Hiroshi Tanahashi for the Rev Pro Heavyweight Championship and Suzuki versus Okada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Both matches were phenomenal. Like, I was on the floor, so it was kind of hard to see, especially with Zack and Tanahashi's match, some of the amazing floor-based action. But honestly, such a great match. Zack had such a warm welcome. Um, there was a lot of shouting of a fuck you Boris Johnson, fuck the Tories, things like that. And oddly enough, Tanahashi actually won the title that night, so he beat Zack. But again, like as much as Zack's a hometown boy, everyone loves Tanahashi. Similarly with Suzuki versus Okada, the bizarre thing was Suzuki was the babyface. Coming out, everyone shouted, Katsu ni nare for his theme tune. He was the one being cheered. Unfortunately, whereas... Tanahashi beat Zack, Okada retained, which obviously made sense going forward, it was going up to Wrestle Kingdom, but that was another pivotal moment, because it proved that, you know what, although Suzuki Goon was never, maybe at the forefront at this time, especially in 2019, they had the ability to main event huge shows in foreign countries and have them be the stars. Personally for me, looking at 2020, it was all about the tag teams. So it was a shocker where we finally saw the tag team of Tanahashi and Kota Ibushi, where are you Kota, win the IWGP Heavyweight Championships. And this is where the most beautiful team, I think, really came to fruition. It was the cementing dominance of Dangerous Techers. So Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr., or as I call it, New Japan's most loved love story. Now, obviously, knowing what you do about what's happened to the guys now, so obviously Zack and Tai Chi have gone their separate ways and in different factions. This was really a new breath of fresh air in the tag division, which had been quite stale. You've got G.O.D., you've got the same people going for the titles, as good as the teams are. It's almost like there wasn't anyone new. You were seeing the same matches between the same teams. And we knew that Zack was amazing at tag team wrestling. He'd been the Rev Pro tag team champions with Suzuki and they are a formidable team. But there was something about the contrast and differences between Tai Chi and Zack with their style, their image, that made them even more perfect together. They complemented each other perfectly. So we had Tai Chi's strength, his amazing singing voice. <laughs> he's more like charismatic self when he's in the ring but also still one of the black sheep of New Japan so came in was sort of seen as an outsider and really was quite hated you know there was always the chance of Tai Chi Kairi so Tai Chi go home even now like it's similar but it's more like ironic whereas you had Zack who was very much less about the flamboyancy but about the mat based skills he was a skinny noodle boy a socialist vegan hydra as you call it but the team worked perfectly. Despite, I think they initially lost their match against the two. But in July, let me check. In July, they finally won the titles for the first time. And although it wasn't probably the IWGP gold that either of them wanted, since we know that Taichi had never gold, and um, he'd had the IWGP junior had titles, don't hold me to that. He was a big presence in the title division when he was a junior. Um, but Zack had never had any IWGP gold. So for them, it was something they could have together. Similarly, on the other side, so in the other division of the juniors, Desperado and Kanemaru were still cementing their status as the best junior team in New Japan. Even like similarly to Dangerous Techers, they are now not going to be a team. Cries. But between Desperado and Kanemaru, they similarly had a very strong, diverse background decades of experience especially when it came to Kanemaru they had the ground-based submission the strength-based submission even a bit of lucha when both guys wanted it and a whole lot of whiskey so they had some phenomenal matches throughout proving that we'd seen um, Lance Archer and David Boy Smith leave the company sadly and leave Suzuki Goon albeit for one of them temporarily it meant that we now had people in every division singles division we got it junior tag 
juniors, heavyweights, never. Suzuki Goon was the faction with literally, there were no weak links. And yes, even with Taka and Doki at the time, they had no weak links. We then got into 2021 and personally for me, and I don't know if you guys feel the same, 2021 was, I think, El Desperado's year. So um, Hiromu had won the title and we know Hiromu has not had the best luck with the junior title, which is saying something considering he holds it now. But he once again had to vacate the title due to injury. I think this time it was a pectoral injury from what I remember rightly. So for the vacant championship in February, I think it was, it was February, would that have been New Beginnings? There was a triple threat for the vacant title. And as I've said, a thousand times before whereas most wrestlers and most divisions in new japan can't work from a multi-man title format this is not the case with the juniors so we had el desperado bushi and el fantasmo i know this was l l two masks it worked really well so we had that and desperado won this was his first title reign as a single champion and can i tell you i've never seen a group of fans so happy as us suzuki gun fans we were over the moon and he just went from like dominance to dominance. He was dominating the matches. He was showing up. He had his, because obviously the anniversary show in March, he had his match against Okada. So heavyweight versus junior. And there were moments where I was legit like, holy crap, like Desperado could win both titles. It obviously didn't happen, but it was a nice thing. Similarly, in September that year, Lance Archer was in AEW and it was the first time in a very long time that the two had reunited. So Suzuki made an appearance on AEW and they were teaming together, proving that yes, we are getting closer to a relationship between the two companies at that time. Because obviously this was before Forbidden Door and everything like that. And for many Suzuki Goon fan members, Suzuki Goon member fans, I think that makes sense. It was just nice to see Murder Dad with his murder brother. I think because you can sort of say that you've got like the top tier, so I guess Archer, Iska and Suzuki, then Taichi, Zack, Kanomaru, Despi, oh, Otaka's on the top side, and then Doki is like the son. And that was really nice to have them together, and it just sort of shows that, you know what, Suzuki-gun is a family, unlike many other factions which are very happy to leave and just never look back. And now we're on to 2022. Now... Again, a bittersweet year. So we started off amazingly, so as I'm gonna check. January the 4th, so Desperado retained his title. So his IWGP junior title. Suzuki won the provisional King of Pro Wrestling title, but sadly, Dangerous Tech has lost the IWGP heavyweight tag titles to Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi Bishamon, who had previously won World Tag League, which obviously they did again this year. There must be something in the water at Wrestle Kingdom for Bishamon. Um, from there, it was a up and down battle for Suzuki Gun, as it always is. So Suzuki eventually lost the King of Pro Wrestling provisional title to Yano. Zack Sabre Jr. won the New Japan Cup for the second time, but unfortunately failed to capitalise. Let's have a look what else happened. Um, so yeah, he lost to Okada. Suzuki won the Ring of Honor title, albeit for I think like a week or so. Um, but we saw the family getting stronger and stronger. So um, Lance Archer returned for the G1 last year in the Stardom and New Japan show in October. We saw the T, so we saw the members of Suzuki Goon fighting against each other alongside the Stardom roster. And it just felt like each time they were getting stronger and stronger. Yes, the titles weren't always there. So Desperado obviously lost the title to Ishimori earlier in the year. <clears throat> Um, Kanemaru and Despi hadn't actually won the tag titles back. Zack was failing to win any IWGP gold, although he had advanced in the New Japan television tournament, which obviously leads to January and the new start for him. But there were so many strong moments. So while Desperado was busy preparing for his IWGP junior shot at Wrestle Kingdom this year, Doki and Kanemaru were slaying. They were like absolutely working the tag division and um, not coming out on top but beating the champions. And it just seemed to be perfect until I was in Paris and saw that Suzuki was making a big announcement that the group was disbanding. And I guess that's where we end the video. Um, it was a beautiful ending where Suzuki was saying how they'd always be a family. 
Unlike Suzuki, he was going through the members and praising them. Even the little, even the Maknae, I guess if you're a K-pop fan, the youngest. At one point he was like, okay, I don't know what to say, Doki, you speak. And every word they said, you could say that it was, whereas most factions will split very badly or there'll be some storyline behind it, this just seemed like the members of Suzuki were ready to go forward. Suzuki said that he was still looking for IWGP gold, just in a different way. We know that all the members are going to be going after titles. Zack won the New Japan Television Championship. Tai Chi, I think this could be Tai Chi's year. And we, obviously we were sad. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I think January, especially New Year's Dash, proved that Suzuki Goon is still a family, even though they've gone their separate ways. So we know that Zack is now a member of the Mighty Don't Kneel, along with the guys like Jonah, Shane, Mikey Nichols. Like, that's a great thing. We don't know what's happening yet, but there is something brewing with Suzuki and Despi after they came out to protect Ren Narita from the House of Torture. So we're hoping that this might be a faction, especially, fingers crossed, if they win the Never titles. And they're just four guys. On New Year's Dash, Takamichi Noku announced that him, Taichi, Kanemaru and Doki have formed a new faction called Just Four Guys. Not just three guys, not just five guys, just four guys. And it just shows that all of Suzuki Goon have new families. They'll never forget their past, but they've got somewhere new and a new chapter in their lives. And also Taichi posted a really cute tweet about Zack, so you know what? The bromance is still real. So yeah, that was my Suzuki Goon history trilogy. That's the end. When I started the, um, well, it's not the trilogy, the four videos, I thought, right, I'm going to wait a bit because I can probably get a few more months and then do a Suzuki Goon video and then wait a year or so. I never thought that it'd be January 2023 and there's no Suzuki Goon, so I had to finish it. I've loved Suzuki Goon since the minute I started watching New Japan and hopefully you guys enjoyed it, like enjoyed them as well. And hopefully you guys enjoyed looking back at the videos. I'll make sure all the links to the previous videos are in the comments. But let me know your thoughts. So now that they've gone, tell me your favourite moments from Suzuki Goon's history. Whether it's the group itself, the members, any matches that stand out. And what do you think the future lies ahead for the former members of Suzuki Goon? As always, make sure to let me know in the comments. Follow me on social media at wrestling underscore chat. And if you like what I do, Click like, hit share and make sure to hit that subscribe button because I'll be back with a new video and hopefully I'm going to start a new history like trilogy or series on the new faction. So let me know who you want me to talk about because as a historian, that's what I love the most. So yeah, I guess on the final note for this Suzuki Goon um, series, Suzuki Goon Ichiban. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.